Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Chris. Chris is from New York City in the USA. So let's see what Chris has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hey William, how are you? Hello Chris, I'm very well. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good, how are you? Very good. Thanks so much for taking the time for the interview today. Thank oh, you. Of course, not a problem. <laughs> so tell me, how's your day going so far? My day is going good. Um, just surviving day by day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, where are you from? I'm from the I'm from New York City, the Bronx specifically. So it's not that e it's not it's not that hard to take a train to the city itself. So I yeah. I see. So tell me what's the best part? What was the best part of growing up in New York City, in your opinion? Oh my goodness, the best part? That would have to be, oh, just the experience of it, you know, just the experience of being around people and being around creative people, more like, which is where we could talk about more about my creativity and what I do as a as a creator. Um myself but just the, the amount of people that are just so welcoming and, and accepting is just beyond belief is all that I can say <laughs> amazing and all your family lives in New York City as well yes well some of them they live a few of them live in Dominican Republic where I'm where my family is from um some of them live in Miami some of them live in uh other parts of Florida but most of them live here in, in the Bronx and Queens as well I see. Mm -hmm. So tell me, um, you're saying that you're a creator. So tell me a little bit about your career. What do you do for a living? Well, technically, I work as a home attendant, home health aide for my grandmother. So I basically take care of her and just make sure that she takes her med medications on time and just make sure just be there for her as a companion. But on the side, I also have, I'm, I'm the host of two podcasts. Um, one of them is called That Old Gay Classic Cinema, which is review, which reviews uh, classic films that are on the Turner Classic Movie Register, but they look at them, but we view them through a queer lens. So it's right. not like we're just reviewing them, but we're also just looking at them through a much more different and more a very different scope than what other people do. And my other podcast, which is going to be debuting very soon, is called From Enchanted Frogs to Dancing Princesses, a fairy tale theater podcast. So we're just going to be diving episode by episode. It was a show in the 80s. Um, so we're just going to dive in episode by episode and just dive into the fairy tales and dive into what makes them special and their significance to, to, to the fans and to, and to, and to us, the host. Amazing. Amazing. I think it's great to be, I know, doing something that you enjoy, that's your passion. You know what I mean? Exactly. Right, so during the journey, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your podcast, about your life overall, okay? Sure. So, before we start our journey, we in the Magic Box, how would you like oh to tell me... Oh my God, me? yes! <laughs> before we start the Magic Box, how would you like to tell me something interesting about yourself? Something interesting? Um, well, I know the entire script, choreography, and blocking to The Wizard of Oz, which is one of my favorite films of all time, so... <laughs> Oh, wow. When was the last time that you watched it? Oh my God, it had to be last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Chris, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life? To share your I am so ready, William. Hit me with it. Go on. Amazing. <laughs> Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So, this is my best friend, okay? for the fun questions yeah i'm just gonna play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question okay sure let's do it okay Bye. okay chris during the journey if it comes up a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason you don't want to answer you always can change okay sure okay first question for you is what does family mean to you oh Ooh, well, coming from a big family like myself, it just means a lot of compassion, a lot mm -hmm. of love, a lot of understanding, and a lot of patience. As a Dominican person myself, I know we're very loud. We're very out of the box, as you can say, <laughs> which is 
our family, my family is very passionate about um, what we what we do. So everything is like done 101% more than what it, what is expected of us. So for family, for me, it just means always being there, always being active, always being, uh, just, just being there. Who in your family you are more close to? Oh my goodness. If I have to choose, I'd have to choose my father. Hmm, tell me why. Well, because um, my parents were divorced suddenly uh, uh, when I was a baby, so I grew more attached to him than I did my mother, and it, we've just we've just created a bond that um, that is kind of inseparable. Yes, we've had our ups and downs, but overall, we've just um, learned a lot more about each other than than I would ever want to know about him. So, and and it's been a very interesting and great journey for for both of us and both of your parents they are from dominican republic yes i see okay next question let's yes. do it next question for you is tough question now if someone gave you an envelope yeah with your yes. death date inside of it would you open it or not and why ah, that is a that is a, that is a very tough question. Um, if it was an envelope with my death, you know what? I would not open it because I would like to know that I've lived life to the fullest. I wouldn't want to know my death date because I would want to. I would want to feel as if my life is still beginning because my life still is turning and being more and and and, and adapting more than I would ever want to really care about. So I, I wouldn't open the envelope because I, it doesn't matter to me whether I, you know, when I die, it's a matter of what I have accomplished is more, is what matters to me. When you think about dying or, you know, it's something that bothers you or something that's just this, uh, you know, a matter of life. You know, I've always questioned that myself. I don't really view death as scary. I view it as something Kind of like reincarnation, like say if you want to, if you die and then God asks you, would you, how would you want to feel as if you've impacted your life? What what animal would you come back as? And my answer would probably be, um, <laughs> <laughs> it had to be like a silly, silly answer. But this is one I, I have to say a merman. <laughs> wow. <I> love <laughs> have you seen the new movie? I have not, no, but I've been dying to. I've heard went, great things about it, though. Yeah, I went to see on set on Sunday night, actually. Oh I went my God, to see how it. was it? Was it, it was good? good. Actually, it actually was good. good. Oh, that's awesome. Was, yeah, it was great. I think Disney, you know, the, the Disney movies, they are just, you know, spectacular. Oh, my God. Yes, I, I fully agree. Oh. Those, yeah. those ones changed my life spectacularly. <laughs> great. Next question. Let's do it. <laughs> Right, before the next question, tell me a little bit about um, your current podcast that you are with, already work on it. Tell yes. me, um, when was the idea, how everything started, and how does it work? It comes up like uh, episodes per week, per daily, how it works. So my podcast at Old Gay Classic Cinema, it is a monthly podcast, so each month is dedicated to a film. We mm -hmm. just finished recording Vertigo, which you just interviewed one of my friends, Andrew Rimby. Um, yes. So he's the one who introduced us to each other. So, um, yeah. And our next month is going to be um, A Star is Born with Judy, Gar Judy Garland's version of it. We're also doing that, but we're also doing a celebration of Judy's life and also Pride because, you know, you can't do Judy Garland without celebrating Pride, you know? <laughs> um, but... To answer your question as to how it how it started, you know, I've always loved watching films, specifically the films, um, classic films like from the 30s and 40s and 50s. So a friend of mine, two friends of mine actually, who host their own podcast, they gave me the initiative. They told me this is what you have to do. This is who I got in contact with and with an artist, and she was able to help me with my current artist, my current artwork that I that I have um and they were just very gracious and they helped me along with it and it's just been a very rewarding journey you know I started um last September 
Um, so, so far it's been a very rewarding experience and I just, I can't wait for what else we have in store. We have so many films on our, on our, on our roster and we have so many people that are interested in be, in being guests and just being impacted by or re-impacted by these films. I see. And so far, what has been the most challenging part since we started in the show? The challenging part, you know, I'd have to say the editing. I'm a, I'm very I'm very particular with how I sound my voice. So I like if even if I have to listen to myself, I always skip it when I'm edit because I'm the one who edits my own show. So I'm the one who has to go in and edit which parts doesn't sound okay, edit which parts I find intriguing, maybe maybe make them louder, maybe make them softer. Just I just try to make it so then my audience can feel at home. I'm not trying, to, this is not a, my podcast isn't scripted. It's just very, it's a very organic podcast. So there's, we do have a format, but it's not like we have, you know, just script or anything. I so see. it's a very, it's very interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Next question is, what hurt your feelings? What hurt my feelings? How long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> what are my feelings? My goodness. Um, like currently or does it have to be current or does it have kind of be in the past could be currently it could be currently yeah um hmm. you know i don't really have anything that hurt my feelings recently everything has been going pretty good so far i can't complain <laughs> and in the past there's something that um in the past, it would have to be just bullies you know i was bullied a lot as a child so i use i'm a big bookworm so i love reading um i use books my armor i loved having my portable cd player as my armor so i can just get away from where i was at that point and just escape to somewhere else where i would feel more where i would feel where i'm able to be myself and having that as an escape is something that I would recommend to anyone, either if they're feeling sad or they're feeling down, just put on a good source of music or read a good book and just escape. And when you think about that time, that challenging time, you know, being bullied as a child or a teenager, uh, tell me which book kind of uh, you felt protected with, like reading and, uh, you know, just lost on your thoughts? Oh, that is a trick question. There's so many. <laughs> There's so many. Um, my goodness, if I have to pick just one. Um, Lee, I have to say, oh, goodness. Um, it had to be The Wizard of Oz by Alfred Baum. That book always just was, it was always able to help me build up more of an armor and just be able to just another was another form of escape for me amazing next question chris let's do it next question for you yes. is in your opinion what is the worst thing someone can say on a first date oh Do you want to pay this Dutch? Like, do you want <laughs> like you want to pay it both ways? Like one one pays one half, the other pays the other half. You know, it's always like who pays who pays the bill? You know, is it the gentleman that pays first or is it me? Now, I in a perfect world, I would imagine that that the gentleman would pay first. But there are sometimes when I would have to we would have to pay both ways. Like we had to pay half half these. Um, but yeah, that would be the that would be one of the worst things. Or I left my credit card at home. How are we going to pay? <laughs> oh my God, that's a bad one. That's a really tricky one. <laughs> Tell me, how is the date in life, in your opinion, in New York City? How do you find? Do you think it's, uh, you know, those big cities is always a lot of people, do you know what I mean? A lot of opportunities for people to get involved. So tell me a little bit about your opinion or your experience. You know, my opinion is that New York men in general are very superficial. They just have this idea that we, that gay men specifically as myself, I came out of middle school and now as an adult, as an adult, I, <laughs> I would like to think that all of us, that they, that some men would put some of us in certain boxes via twink or jock or Dale, like, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> 
so my my range would be a kind of a, a twink in my way but there's there's just it's just so superficial where it's like if you don't have if you don't have enough muscle if you're not feminine or masculine enough if you're not able to portray yourself in a certain light if you're if you're not able to be yourself then how how is that person gonna vision you and envision you in their life you know impacting their life having you be in their life it's it's this it's one of the struggles that i've dealt with dating and that's why i'm still single is because i've just been i'm trying to focus on myself and just focus on what makes me happy rather than trying to please other people and it's so far it's working <laughs> no complaints so far in that department but dating in new york is really tough because they just like i said again men are just very superficial and they just believe that if we if we check certain boxes off their mental list then we'll be able to provide them with whatever they need you know and it's it's just it's it's very it's very tough but i say also very rewarding because there are days when I enjoy being single where I can date New York, you know, as Gary Bradshaw said in Sex and City, I just went on a date with my favorite city where you can go, you can do a lot of things by yourself. You can go to the, you can go to a museum, you can go watch a movie by yourself, you can go to a freaking bookstore by yourself and you would have the time of your life, you know? I love, I love that, actually, I really like that. And let's see, if someone now watch the inter this interview and would you like to um you know be a company with you going to those places like oh. as a bookshop you know what i mean to the cinema to see a movie or yeah. you know what i mean to be a good company for you and maybe join you in on a date like a romantic okay. date what this person must have this person hmm let me think <laughs> i'd have to say this person would have to have <laughs> his own teeth <laughs> <laughs> um, it, he'd have to, he'd, he'd just have to be very compassionate. That's all that I'm looking for in a partner. I'm looking for someone who's compassionate. I'd, it'd have to be someone who, who is able to love me for me. Someone who is able to just be there in the highs and lows of my either career or my life or the way that my life is. It's very complicated, but Hopefully we'll be able to work through it, but you know, I just want them to be able to be open-minded also as well. And also to just be able to have fun. That's it. All right. <laughs> Next question, Chris, let's do it. Yes. Next question is, what is a significant event that has changed you? Oh, significant event that has changed me. Um. Hmm. It hasn't happened yet, but it would have to be in regard to my graduation from college, which would be coming up in in the spring semester, which is next year of of my college semester. I just I just finished getting all my grades for my junior year, wow. um, all A's, thankfully. Um, so now I'm a senior. So now I'm just I'm waiting. I'm taking a break for the summer, and I'm just relaxing. And uh -huh. just the time to myself, but it would have to be hopefully my graduation ceremony. Well, yeah. Wow. And what has been the the most joyful, uh, enjoyable part of this journey for you until you get to your graduation? It is just rewarding. That's uh, that's the one word I can describe it. But um, it does have to be how amazing my professors have been so far with all the wackadoodle ideas that I've had they've always been so welcoming like say if I because I'm a writer so if I want to for the final paper if I want to write something that is is impactful to me but also deals with the, the with the um stuff that we've learned in in the course they will accept it they will not say no you have to do something else they will say no keep doing what you're doing whatever ideas that you have just write it and you'll be perfect. So they've like last uh, two semesters ago, I did a final paper on, on, um, queer identity, um, on Ozma of Oz, comparing that with a fairy tale character, because I was taking a children's literature course. So I was comparing Elfringbaum's work along with the fairy tale character from Be um, the beast from Beauty and the Beast. So I was comparing the transformation between a trans character, Ozma of Oz, between the beast character. So it was very impactful and very significant and 
it's something that I enjoyed working on and it was something that I would never have expected a professor to accept. So it was, it was very rewarding. It was a very rewarding process for me to just say, I can do this. Really? You really want to listen to what I have to say? And it's the same thing with, with my podcast. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have imagined people have been wanting to listen to something as riveting or as intellectual and where I have guests who are more than happy to join in and just say their two pieces. So see. Amazing. Great. Three questions left for you. Let's do yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> Before the next one, as you mentioned about your parents, uh, they're come from uh, Dominica, the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Yes. And did you ever kind of spend some time there as well or not? Yes, I visited there multiple times. I'm actually, funny enough, I'm going there in July. My cousin's getting married. Um, so we're going to be going there for a week. Um, we're going to spend the whole week with family and we're just going to be a great time. But I was there. Um, I have visited there a few times and it's, it's really not my favorite city. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's very loud and it's, um, not as loud as New York City, but it's just, it's just the, the whole atmosphere is like a little bit too congested for me. Whereas in the city, you can breathe a little bit, you can relax, but also it is, a, every city has their own chaos. So, you know. I'll tell you something <laughs> to me. I, um, I'm originally from Brazil, yeah? And uh, a few years ago, I was yeah. working for Disney Cruise Line, for Disney World. Um, yeah. On a cruise oh, ship, wow. yeah, and there was people working there for all of the, the wards. And pe actually, some people for Dominic uh, Dominic Republic they approached me thinking that I was from there. So many times they're like, you start talking Spanish. Me, I was like, oh my god, I don't. Under I, guess, I mean, I understand because Portuguese they are very similar. But I was like, look, it's not my first language. I uh, Spanish. They're like, oh my god, you're not from Dominic Republic. I said, no, I'm from Brazil. They're like, oh my god, I'm sorry. So oh, it what? happened like twice, twice or three times. They they were so oh, sure that I was from there. I found so interesting. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, not not to mention that you do are tan. So people in. Dominican Republic are very tan, so I wouldn't I wouldn't judge them for, for misplacing you for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I found it very interesting because you know, um, yeah, like they are literally they are so sure that they can talk to me, you know, in Spanish. I could see that they were so they, they were so sure that I was from there, and my face was like, sorry, I'm not. I, <laughs> I know what you're talking about because it's very similar, but I I'm from Brazil. They're like, oh my god, sorry, I thought you were from Dominican Republic. I said no, I'm not. Oh my god. <laughs> so Right, next question for you is, what yes. was your favorite part about school? Favorite part? Um, passing my math course. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished getting all my general ed 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 education requirements done, so I don't need to worry about taking another math course for the rest of my life. Um, but so far, my favorite part would just have to be the the ambiance the experience of it growing up who was your favorite teacher oh my god it would have to be one of my elementary school teachers uh, mrs donna fee she she actually is still um teaching but i believe at a different school but she was the one who ins who um also inspired me to read a lot to be more adventurous in my writing to just be myself and to not let anyone say anything different about me so, you know, she was very impactful in that way, have, helping me grow up. Amazing. Two questions left for you. Let's yeah. do it. But before the next one, so tell me a little bit about your new podcast coming out soon. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's funny enough, we're actually going to be recording our introduction episode tomorrow. Um, it's going to be about fairy tales and the impact that it's had on, on us as our, as our host. I'll be having two other people host the podcast with me, two of my dear friends, and we'll be having a lot of guests come along. Um, we're basing it on uh, Sheila Duvall's fairy tale theater, which came out in, in 1982 and ended in 1987. Um, so it, it lasted six seasons. Um, so it, we're just taking it episode by episode and we're diving into the actual, we're going to do one part of an, the actual fairy tale, diving into that. And then the second episode, we're going to be um, 
uh, reviewing the actual episode itself, like how it was televised, what the impact of it was, how does it still hold up today? What 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 are, what is the moral of it? What are we taking away from it? So it's you know it's a very rewarding process. I see. All right. Yep. Next question is: Who is your biggest idol, and what have you learned with this person? Oh, my biggest idol. I have to say Judy Garland. Wow. She, she was one who she's one of my favorite actresses of, of the of the golden age uh, silver screen era. Um, she was one who always just listened to her heart and just always, while she was being manhandled by the company, she was also later in life, she was able to create her own, her own television show. She was able to impact her audience around her. She never, she always said that she would never cheat an audience when she would always perform one of her songs. If it was a song that she knew and the audience knew, she would never, she would never cheat them out of it. She would always just go, go more than what was expected. So, and that was what was so impactful was that she was just, she was very open. She was, she was very accepting of her audience. She knew that there were some homosexuals in her audience that were not able to be out at that time. So she was just, she was very accepting of who came to her shows and who was her audience, target audience, and who, who would be made to matter after she passed away. And that's the impact of her is that she would always be, she would always be there for, for the per, for for a person who was not able to speak up for themselves. And is there is there any particular lesson that you've learned from her? Oh my goodness! It's just to never take a back seat into your own decisions. Wow! Very good one. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Ready for the last question? Yes, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> But before the last question, as you, as you mentioned that you've been doing your podcast since September last year, yeah? Yes. Tell me a moment like that happened through this journey that you're never going to forget. Could be, you know, anything that's like a moment with your guests or with your host or anything that you go like, you know what, this special moment's always going to have a special place in my heart. It was while we were recording our Wizard of Oz episode. I ended up crying because it was just, it was so impactful the way that we were all sharing our stories of how we came to know the movie, how how it has impacted us and how we were first introduced to it. And it was just, I love hearing those stories of how people were introduced to films, to these films that I'll be reviewing is because I just, I love hearing those stories. And it's just, it's something that I will always treasure and something that I will always just have as a remembrance and say, hey, this is how it impacted somebody else's life. How did it, how did their story impact my life is what I'm taking away from it at the end of the day. Wow, beautiful. Last question for you is, where do you want to be in 10 years time from now? Oh my goodness. Well, not in a retirement home. I'd like to, I'd like to <laughs> own my own house or apartment um have just have my own space basically have my own oasis as a way just just to be able to say this is mine no one can take it away from me and if i would just have my own area of bookshelves all around the wall just have my own library because that's what i always tell myself i always have my own library wherever i go if i'm if i'm ever going somewhere then i always have to take a book with me doesn't matter where i'm going so um <laughs> but yeah, 10 years from now i just like to have my own place be settled possibly married possibly have a pet so that's all for now <laughs> in new york city uh maybe not maybe you live in london correct yeah we do. I probably have to move somewhere else. I, I, the city is too congested for me. I've always wanted to move somewhere out in the country, somewhere where it's not so loud and bustling. I know London has its own primo spots for the quietness. I've always wanted to... If you've seen The Holiday with Kate Winslet and Cameron of Diaz, course. I would like to live in Kate Winslet's cottage. Oh that, my God. That's me. That's for me. <laughs> yeah. 
good 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 point actually it's a good spot to live oh my god so sweet so cute the place isn't it oh my it goodness is. imagine spend christmas there like cozy christmas with your family or friends oh my god that would be so amazing oh my god <laughs> wow wow anyway let's see let's see right it's not the end yet let's play now the word association game okay I'm oh going my to goodness you. just tell one word that comes to your mind quick thinking <laughs> So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Let's start with life. Everlasting. One word for family. Loving. Sex. Scary. Money. Renewable. Hmm. Love. Everlasting. Religion. A lesson. Politics. Mm. Ooh, don't want to offend anybody. I'd have to say weird. <laughs> that was very soft, very soft a way of soft, very soft way of describing <laughs> politics. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> Let's go with fear. Fear? Oh, goodness. Um, limitless. Friendship. Unconditional. Regrets. Sadness. Desire. Mm. Sweet. Success. Bountiful. Wish. Dreams. Happiness. Open. One word, one word for New York City. Loud. <laughs> <laughs> one word for USA. Mm. Green. One word for Dominican Republic. Bustling. One word for your podcast. Riveting. And the last one now, the Wizard of Oz, one word. Oh, magical. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's pretend I'm going to meet our best friend for a coffee and I'm going to ask your best friends, what is the most beautiful thing about Chris and what's something that he still needs to work on to improve on? What your best friend would say? Oh, one beautiful thing that they'd have to say about me is that I'm very, I'm very therapeutic I'm very open to whatever they have to say I'm not at all like if they have a problem they could always come to me I'm very reliable I'm I'm, I'm a good listener but one thing that they'd have to say that I need to work on is budgets <laughs> <laughs> they all know this they're just like you need to work on a budget <laughs> do you see some work in progress regarding that yes yes Good. Very slowly, but it's <laughs> <laughs> let's play now, Chris, and the magic box, and you can ask me a question. But before oh. that, let's play the music one more time. Let's do it. Okay. All right, Chris. But before you ask him the question, tell me what's your favorite Spanish word? Mm. Oh. Oh. My favorite Spanish word. Hmm. Por qué? Which means? Why? Good one. The same in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> Por qué? <laughs> you can ask me a question now. I've 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 seen some of your videos and they're so amazing. Um, I'd have to say, what was your initial thought of creating this whole process, and how how rewarding has it been for you? Wow, amazing question. Um, you know, 
when I, when I, you were talking about you know organizing, create your podcast, my mind was going through as well the same time when my podcast you know started, and uh, I before the first lockdown 2020, I was I was already thinking about to do something creative, something on YouTube. Yeah, the first idea was about music. I love music, so I wanted to do something connect with music where I could express myself, where people could express themselves as well. But as you know, you cannot use other people's, you know, music on the show mm -hmm. because right, yeah. <laughs> okay, when I when I find out that my, you know, all my dreams went like duh, 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 down. So I said, okay, let's put on the side, let's see what we can I do. But I didn't, you know, I just let things come naturally, yeah. Lockdown hit the first one, 2020, and uh, here in England, um, we just could leave the house once a day for exercise. Yeah? So I was leaving the house once a day to do some run in the park. And one of those runs, this idea came along and you have no idea how powerful it was because, you know, I was running and trying to think, my goodness, what can I do to, you know, to express myself, to connect with people? And suddenly this idea came along and you have no idea how powerful it was. I stopped in a moment and I couldn't do anything else anymore because my mind went like far away. And I was like, oh my God, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create questions. I'm going to research some questions and literally just, you know, connect with people, see their point of view, see what they think, express themselves. And um, fun enough, uh, the sec second part of your question, I, I think the, the, the biggest, uh, you know, surprise or magical part about the show that I wasn't expecting is... When I started doing the show, I had no idea what would happen. And for my, but my thought was, okay, we're gonna laugh, we're gonna have some fun, we're gonna, you know, express ourselves, we're gonna have a, a great moment. But I was expecting people to open up about themselves, to get emotional, to talk, to trust me, to talk about things that they never talked to anyone before. You have no idea how many people already sent me like message in private saying, my God, William, I never talk about that with anyone, but I felt so comfortable talking to you. I felt so open and safe as well. And I was like, oh my goodness, I was expecting that about the show. I was expecting people just to have some, you know, again, it's still fun for them, but for some reason, through the questions, they feel they feel safe, or they feel, you know, they can they feel like safe to open up about things that maybe they talked already in the past, but you know, they feel safe talking again, not just to me, but they know that the whole world is gonna be seeing and watching and uh, also connect with them. So that's the most uh, biggest surprise of the show that I was expecting, and we went in a beautiful direction because people they when they are here, you know, for some reason, some of people, some of the people they, you know, they never done something like that before, and they go like, you know, William, I'm so glad that took the challenge because I never done something like that before. And when I was talking to you, I forgot that we were recording. You know, was a, a, you know a show that's gonna come up, some, you know, some some point. And I felt, oh my goodness, I was expecting that. So all those beautiful surprises that, you know, just uh, kind of make me so happy and also make me like carry on with the, you know, this job because it's it's so magical, it's so powerful. And so it's a lot of fun as well. And I just love it. I think it, it's great. So yeah, that's my answer to you. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good time, Chris? I did. Such a great <laughs> team. Thank you. Thanks so much for being for being so kind and be part of the show and also to express yourself and to share you as well, you know, your moments, your you know, your ideas, and for sure people are gonna connect with you as well. Thank you. Before you go, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. Always be a first-rate version of yourself, never a second-rate version of yourself. That's from Judy Garland. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks so much, Chris, and you keep in touch. It was a pleasure having you on the yes, show, okay? Thank you. And good luck with your podcast and the new one coming soon thank as well. You. Okay, thank best you. of luck. <laughs> Take care, okay? Have a good Bye -bye. night. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> so, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel. And after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. 
and I see you there. Bye bye, see you next time.